together to make not just small, but big differences. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Denfield. There is an app in Australia called Fires Near Me. Fires Near Me. The fires are so strong they've destroyed even wet areas like rainforests and eucalyptus forests. And Canberra is now so smoky that it is officially the most polluted city in the world. And for fires of this scale, firefighters can't really do much about it. You simply have to wait and hope for rain. Australia is now at the mercy of the climate we have all created. And of course, we're still pumping carbon into the atmosphere. And so the planet continues to warm. And so the fires next year will be worse. And the fires the year after that will be worse. And they will get worse and worse and worse. And one year, in the not too distant future, they will reach the major cities. And Australia will no longer be a safe place to live in. Even before that happens, who's going to want to live in a country where for four months of the year, you can't breathe? I have family in Australia, and when the time comes, and they are climate refugees, I do hope the government of this country will let them come and live with us, because if they don't, I don't know where else they're going to go. This is the reality of a climate emergency. The clue is in the title. It's not a climate problem. It's not a climate disaster. It's a climate emergency. The WES is a good document. And clearly a lot of work has gone into the action plan, but a lot of the actions in that plan are to develop further plans. It's a lot of thinking about things rather than doing things. And so I don't think the Tories have properly understood the scale of this issue or the urgency required here. Councillor Govindia said earlier on in this meeting that Rome wasn't built in a day, but I've just seen an entire hospital built in 10, and that's what you can do when you recognize a true emergency. This council declared a climate emergency in July 2019, and yet the Tories are only going to commit to specific targets in February 2021. 18 months is not an acceptable response time in an emergency. I've also heard that some Tories are worried that reducing the borough's emissions will simply cost too much, but this is objectively nonsensical. To return to Australia, as of early January, insurance claims worth 644 million had been lodged. For the people of Sydney, the disruption is costing $50 million a day. The total cost in terms of damage to the country is estimated to exceed 4.4 billion, and in terms of lost economic growth, between 3 and 13 billion. And this is not something that that country's finances can absorb year after year. The Australian government has pledged $2 billion in fire relief, but as a result of that, has downgraded its commitment to return to a budget surplus. And as I said earlier, these fires are going to get worse next year, and the year after that, and the year after that, until the costs associated with them are simply unsustainable. JFK said the time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining. We need to fix the climate emergency now before the smoke blacks out the sun entirely. Spending the money now will, make, will save far, far more in the long run. It makes unarguable economic sense. It is sadly too late for Australia, but it is not too late for us. But the party opposite me needs to act quicker. On the Finance Committee, I heard a Tory councillor ask the Cabinet member what priority he gave the WES. First, second, third. The response was that he didn't like to prioritize amongst the many important and vital services the council provides. But unfortunately, I think that is the wrong answer. Tackling climate change has to be the top priority because if the world burns, everything else is moot. Council of Govindia and the rest of the Tory group opposite me, you have two years left in power before we take over and do this properly. I suggest you use the time doing something rather than planning to do something.
Councillor Calland. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So what a week it is to be talking about this subject. It's a week where our government has been looking forward to COP26 and has announced actually that it's going to be bringing forward the ban of new diesel and petrol vehicles until 2035 to help ensure that we hit our national conservative set targets of carbon neutrality by 2050. To me, this shows that they are ready and that they are willing to take hard decisions. As declaring a climate emergency is really easy whereas actually realising its ambitions and the ambitions that we set out in ours is harder. That's why I am really proud and very excited to see Wandsworth's very own plan for realising its own ambitions. While it may sometimes feel as though our individual contributions, like the ones that Councillor Hampton spoke to, or even Wandsworth's contributions, like Councillor Govindia has spoken to, are but a drop in the ocean of what is a huge global problem, mighty as we are in Wandsworth, uh, so I wanted to have a look this evening and think particularly about how this plan will really talk to improving our air quality. As I and I'm sure many of you um, often hear from residents that this is an immediate and pressing concern for them. So I think this is an area that our plan touches on in a number of different ways and it's what, somewhere where I think the actions that we're taking now and the actions that we've set out are going to make a real and immediate change to many of our residents' lives. As I'm sure a lot of you know, London's air pollution is often at illegal levels and contributes to some 9,000 premature deaths a year. According to King's College, that I know other colleagues have referenced this evening, who run the air pollution monitoring network in London, um, the largest contributor to poor air quality is diesel vehicles. It's one of the reasons why the government's decision this week has been so welcome and why I'm very proud that the Conservatives decided that this council would... Um, install electric charging points across the borough, way ahead of the curve, not just in London, but in the entire country, as an incentive for people to swap to electric vehicles as soon as they felt that they could. Electric vehicles, for all of their pros and cons, do play an important role in improving air quality and in reducing our dependency on fossil fuels. This is why, as a metric in our plan, all council vehicles will be powered by electric or by renewable fuel sources by 2030. Over the next generation, we will see a major change in our road vehicle technology that could lead eventually to uh, seeing all of our vehicles replaced by transportation that's fully electric, fully automotive, uh, automated even, uh, and fully connected. And I think in Wandsworth, we have already put ourselves one step closer to this. But our aim for the future of transport in this borough isn't just around uh, a change in, in use of cars to electric or hybrid. It's much more than that. It's also about how we encourage and how we enable more sustainable transport options and travel options. So one initiative I'm really pleased to see highlighted in this plan is an update to our bike hanger strategy. I did get the other day, and I hope that all of you did as well, an email from officers talking about placements for two new bike hangers in my ward. So I very much hope that you all got a very similar email and we will start to see the introduction of those shortly. We've also agreed a dockless e-bike scream across the borough. We've supported 35 streets uh, to participate in Car Free Day. We're introducing a consultation for school streets. We're conducting wide-ranging corridor studies in different areas around the borough so that we can really look at joined up sustainable travel for particular geographical places. And we're not doing this in isolation either. We are doing this together with our expert community groups via things like the Healthy Streets Forum that I was lucky enough to attend last year. And there was a great debate about from a number of different groups about a number of different great initiatives. And while the announcement from the government this week was very welcome, we will keep encouraging and lobbying for more change, particularly and quite urgently around the increased powers needed to issue fines for drivers of idling vehicles. All this and more will enable us to ensure that the air that we breathe is as free from pollution as possible. But like with most things in life and with all things in politics, this will evolve and change. This isn't the end of our plan. This isn't even the beginning of the end of our plan. There will be some colleagues here, and we've heard them already, who will say that we haven't gone far enough or that we haven't gone fast enough or that we could do more. And you know what? You're right. There's always, always more that we could do. But the thing about leadership is that you have to be prepared to take the hard decisions about what you can do. And that's what this plan does. And with the pragmatism and the sound economics of this conservative group over a number of years, the amount of things that have been set out in this plan that we can do and are genuinely achievable are huge and a testament to the excellent leadership that this council has seen for the last 40 years. Thank you. 
Councillor Walker. Madam Mayor, having lived through unchecked free market capitalism, putting finance ahead of people and our environment, I am delighted that residents in Wandsworth are fighting back. It was a total pleasure to see so many community groups holding Wandsworth Council to account last week, asking why carbon data is missing from the website, insisting that 2025 to get just 50% of schools signed up to school streets is too little and too late. And I also would like to pay tribute to the 10,000 plus signatories of which I am proud to be one and the Greens for forcing this debate. Right across this chamber, we are all agreed that we are in a massive emergency. Wandsworth Council has now declared itself serious about collective action for the greater good. With this new action plan, we now have something tangible to work on. Some of you may already know that Wandsworth's record on managing carbon isn't great. The draft carbon action Carbon Management Plan, dated June 2010, was shelved. We've had 10 wasted years. Now, we are, we are ratifying this current plan, and we're committing to action, and this has to be welcomed. And I want to thank the officers who have clearly put in a lot of work on this plan, yet it's my job to question and scrutinize, and I do have concerns. I'm concerned that we are going to spend the next year working out targets, some of which already exist. This is a decade of change. Every month counts. I'm concerned it contains work such as auditing our housing stock, which really should be happening anyway. I'm concerned that we are only going to introduce minimum energy efficiency standards in the private rented sector People in fuel poverty need much more than this. And there's no mention of Wandsworth's abysmal record on recycling or food waste. And I'm concerned at the caution throughout this document. When I read the words, investigate, develop a draft, consider cost, and the deadly explore, what I want is implement, action, deliver, Wandsworth, Let's be bold. Residents tell us that they want to see Wandsworth Council putting its own house in order, and that includes outsourcing. Residents tell us they want the council to tell the truth. Why do our published carbon figures stop at 2015? Why does the staff budget on this plan drop off in May 2022? Are you really telling me it's all going to be fixed in two years? And what do we know is happening in May 2022, everyone? Yes, yes, there's local elections. But that's okay because we in Labour promise to carry this work on after. Residents tell us they want a fair system, one with incentives and penalties. Why should some be allowed to pollute more than others? SUVs and multiple car owners, when some of the most economically disadvantaged people live in the most polluted areas. Children with five to 10% less lung capacity because they are poor? Come on, Wandsworth, we can fix this. And the price of carbon, is that fair? Wandsworth is charging developers 60 pounds per tonne. GLA are going to 95. I find out that Lewisham is charging 104. Luxury developments are being built across Wandsworth, and what are we gaining? Toxic air and housing crisis. Let's raise our carbon price on construction. Make them clean up their act. To conclude, Madam Mayor, I'm genuinely delighted that we have this paper. It is testimony that grassroots group can really make the difference that we can come together across the political divide, working for all our sakes. But it can't stop here. People in the gallery and watching, I invite you to join us to make sure this plan is delivered because we can, we really can make this happen.
Thank you. Councillor Grimston. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I would say, first of all, these, the, the, we are in a different world from where we were 10 years ago when I would sit there listening to a, one of Councillor Bryn's predecessors telling us that climate change had all been got up by the lefties and there was no way this council would ever take any step to prevent it. And I really don't want to be in danger of, of letting the perfect uh, get in the way of the good because they are often enemies. And there's some very good work, particularly from officers Andy do from Councillor O'Brien, in the uh, work that's been so far. But, Mr. Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, the more I've been thinking about it, the more I feel there's a missing layer here. We have an ambition, which is to be the greenest in a London council, that's fine. We have an action plan, which I think has 170 actions in it. And yet, there is no sense of prioritisation among those 150 actions, and there are no numbers. Any of you who have read uh, David Mackay on this will know that climate change fighting is all about numbers. That's what it's about. All sorts of rather nice things we might do will have hardly any effect. If everybody in the world does a little, the effect of that will be to make a little bit of a difference. And there's much wider issues here. And uh, we know the words, uh, between the emotion and the response, between the conception and the creation, uh, between the motion and the act falls the shadow. And that's the danger that we face. We may not all end up as, as hollow men exactly, but we are in danger of ending up with a rather hollow program that we're trying to uh, carry uh, forward. And so my question about the whole thing, firstly, is just what does it mean? What does it mean to say we're going to be the greenest in a London uh, borough? We have the climate action from Friends of the Earth that on a wide range of issues thinks what moment we lie 10th out of 12 in terms of our overall environmental uh, performance. I read the leader's answer to my question. He makes some very sensible points in it. But nonetheless, that methodology was applied equally to all of the 12 in the London boroughs. If we don't accept that we are 10th out of 12, then we need another set of metrics that we do accept, but we need a set of metrics, and we haven't got anything in there to suggest what it is. The point has been made, although only in passing really, about recycling. The government's metric is that we're the fifth worst in the country and the 11th out of 12 in inner London, so that's a fairly firm metric. But what the, a strategy would tell us, which is what we're missing, is that recycling actually has enormous symbolic importance in all of this. It might be the single most salient environmental action that people are deliberately taking in their own home. And when they spend a lot of time washing their bottles and putting them in their sack and going out there and watching the operatives put the black sacks and the orange sacks in the same container, of the uh, lorry, and I can't be the only one who hears that on a very regular basis from residents, then there is a real danger there that the question comes back, you're asking us to do a lot, but why don't you do the very simple things themselves? And I would hope that Councillor Brim will, will guarantee at the end of this that one of the things he means by us being the greenest in London Council is we will have the best recycling rates in, in London. We always get the answer back, well, uh, yeah, but incineration. Well, a lot of boroughs use incineration without having the appalling performance on, on recycling that we have uh, here. And most of all, there's no central recognition that all environmental action is about trade-off. There is nothing that you can do to improve one area of the environment that doesn't damage another area of the environment, except maybe stopping doing something uh, altogether. And uh, we had a discussion about Hammersmith Bridge earlier. We have to be talking about Hammersmith Bridge, about what are the carbon implications of keeping it open or keeping it, or reopening it or keeping it shut. I don't know what the answer to that is. It might be either way round. But to be having a debate of that nature without a discussion about the carbon implications suggests that we really are, that this may not be uh, quite as central to thinking as we would like it uh, ultimately to be. And as I've said before, we should have carbon budgets alongside our financial budgets if we're serious about this. Just one final point, uh, Madam Mayor. We're told this is the most important thing facing this council for years to come. As members, we have had precisely one hour to scrutinise this in the course of the last six months. We had a uh, an Ovian scrutiny com committee meeting last uh, week 
when most members there were allowed to make one short comment or question. There was no opportunity whatsoever for an interplay of ideas for its use. Now, I just realized when I was coming into that, I don't know if there are any qualified engineers among the councillors in here. It's just crazy that I don't know that. I don't know the particular skills within this chamber. There are many councils which are actually going out there and having away days. They're actually having open meetings with all their councillors to discuss the way forward. Wandsworth puts in, in place guillotines on committee meetings in order precisely to prevent any serious scrutiny of these sorts of plans. And goodness me, that policy and worked Councilor in space Grinston. last week. Madam Mayor, yes, I, know from where, I know from where I am at the moment I can't support this. I will uh, listen to Councillor Brink carefully before deciding whether to abstain or to uh, vote against. But I have to say I'm always very worried by the whole concept of political, to total political consensus. It's a good start in some ways, it's not a very good start in others, and we must make sure at the very start that we get these strategic arguments in play. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Hogg. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is a hugely exciting strategy. Uh, it's a massive challenge with big opportunities. Uh, I want to congratulate all involved and um, just talk, uh, focus on a couple of the big challenges reaching net zero carbon and a couple of the big opportunities that it presents to us. Um, the challenge is global and it is real. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says it is extremely likely that human influence has been the dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid 20th century. So climate change is not a hoax got up by socialists or the Chinese government, which was until relatively recently an idea that had quite a strong foothold in this town hall. We must act. Um, one major challenge facing us, as always, is about priorities, because in real life there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. Residents want us to deliver this agenda on the crystal clear understanding that we will also deliver better services. Local people won't thank us if we come back next year and report reductions in carbon but they feel their children are unsafe or that their street is a mess. And I can guarantee that as well as fighting climate change, we will not forget those families left behind by damaging social change. Let's accept from the start, taking on the climate challenge does not make life easier for this council. It means even tougher choices about priorities, even more engagement for local, with local people, and even more knowledge and new skills to master. We are just one council, but our actions do matter. We set an example, we do our bit, and by acting locally, we will have an impact globally. The world followed Wandsworth when we invented municipal socialism in the first half of the 20th century, when we invented Thatcherism in the second half of the 20th century. And now we can set a global example once more by creating a compassionate, carbon neutral 21st century council. Another major challenge we can't avoid is delivery because um, change is hard. Uh, I'll give one example. I mean, we like trees. Councillor Denfield gave a great speech last time about uh, trees are the best carbon capture technology we have out there. Let's plant more trees. Well, I, I recently got an email from a, a resident in Latchmere Ward about some trees we planted. They're apparently not native trees. They grow very quickly, which led to other trees having to be removed. They also allowed larger birds to come in, removing our flock of house sparrows even the wood pigeons have been ousted by the London pigeons. This knee-jerk, ignorant reaction and pretense of virtue by the council is absolutely typical in its attempts to grab headlines. That's what you get for trying to plant some trees. Um, change is hard. And alongside those very real challenges of priorities and delivery, um, I do think there are huge opportunities. First, we can get closer to our residents. Let's reach out and work in partnership with local people this will be from the grassroots up rather than from the top down. Uh, we won't be wagging fingers at people. Uh, I recently saw a councillor telling a resident to have fewer children and to stop using a car for their school run. That's unacceptable. We must support people and bring them with us. And I think the second opportunity is actually that we as councillors get to work closer together. Uh, I'd like to credit great cross-party work on the pensions committee. I thought it was a very good vibe in finance as well. And, you know, while there are elements that we would change about the paper, I think it is on balance remarkably similar to the strategy that a Labour administration would have asked officers to draw up as well. So naturally, we hope to take control of the council in a couple of years. 
and then the responsibility to implement this strategy will fall to us. And we want local people to know that whoever is running the council will carry forward this absolutely crucial agenda. And I hope we can build a lasting cross-party consensus on that. So our local approach will be rooted in common sense and fairness, a vision of the good life that we've built here in Wandsworth, diverse and tolerant, affluent and generous, urban and green. I think we've built a place where families can lead fulfilling lives in sustainable communities. So there's much still to do, but let's go forward in the optimistic knowledge that Wandsworth Council can once again lead the way. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Councillor Brown. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I hope uh, there is a risk. I've, I've abandoned everything I was going to say because I've, I've heard this debate. So I'm just going to go off. And so there is a slight risk I'll go over my allotted time. If you would give me indulgence of between 60 and 90 seconds, I'd be grateful. <laughs> thank you. Let me just start. Let me just start by saying very, very clearly that there is no virtue singling involved here in our plan. This is about reducing carbon and it's about a very specific target for 2030. Absolutely clear, absolutely fundamental to everything we're doing, absolutely fundamental to this council. We talk about priorities, it couldn't be more fundamental. I'm not going to say where it fits against our responsibility to vulnerable children and to the elderly, as you can well expect. But I think what we have done is absolutely clear as to how important this is to us. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm angered by the suggestion otherwise. We had a petition uh, brought to us by actually well over 10,000 people um, a year ago um, where, where they asked, you know, do we care about climate change? And, and we do, between us all. And we declared a climate change emergency. And then the question was, well, are, you know, are you prepared to move fast about this? And are you actually committed in any serious way? And we brought a strategy paper within a matter of months. And then we brought an action plan as soon as possible in, in this year. Of the councils in the country, I think two, around 200 have declared a climate change emergency. Only 35 have actually brought their action plan forward, of which we are one. And in terms of commitment, as we've talked about already tonight, not only is there 5 million for the projects that, that are specifically allocated, but we're talking about 20 million that we already now have in chain on capital projects. Talking about air quality and improvements to transport, we have over five million pounds of that, which is committed to improving air quality. Councillor Denfield um, gave a, a tour de force on, on Australia uh, wildfire, which, which was um, appreciated in its own way. I remember his speech last time about trees. Well, guess what? We're building thousands of trees. There's over 600, there's over, there's over six building, planting, over six, over 600,000 pounds worth going into trees. We're, we're taking action, I mean, Councillor Hogg gave us a great example of trees already being um, already being built. So I, I just I don't accept uh, accept oh, we like to build trees in Wandsworth. Um, uh, I just don't accept the challenge uh, that we're not taking action. We're taking action on everything which has been mentioned. Um, I won't dwell because of time on uh, the audiovisual issue because I, I I don't I don't think it's relevant to this debate or indeed coral reef for Wandsworth. Um, but, but again, the, the comments are, um, are noted. But uh, bike hangers was something else that came up. Again, it is so, so critical to us that it is understood by all here and by all residents in the gallery and all residents listening. Th this is important to us and we believe it can only work if we listen and work together. It was made very clear to us that bike hangers was something that our residents wanted to see. That's why we brought, brought forward a new policy to see how it could work. That's why bike hangers are now about to be rolled out, as Councillor Cullen very much uh, you know, exp explained um, in, her, in her excellent um, speech. What else was raised? I want to cover everything. Learning from mistakes, challenges as we go along. Absolutely, absolutely. We will be willing to listen. We had a very robust discussion in our finance and corporate resources about um, utilities procurement, which is a paper coming forward in the very near